Hey, welcome to Wise Up On Air. My name is Damian Kaspauer. Uh, you're listening to the sounds of Greece. This is a beautiful game, delicate sounds, uh, bringing us into January 2020 episode. We have a special guest with us today. I'd like to introduce Ruben Rinko. Hey Ruben, how's it going today? Hello. Everything is doing fine. How are you doing? Excellent. Doing great. It's fantastic to see you and thanks for joining me today. That's uh, Looking forward to chatting more about Greece, your involvement, and your history. Um, and a regular part of Wise Up On Air is that we dig through a little community and news. So let's talk through that and then jump into uh, the rest of our conversation. So a couple cool things. It's a new year. 2020 you feeling it <laughs> uh i like it i like it good to see uh good to see folks in the chat room alex sophia uh always a pleasure pob 64 got a pikachu up there oh awesome <laughs> that's great you gotta have family represent it's great uh yes. so welcome to the new year uh and a new year of wise up on air a um, couple of cool things coming up to put on your calendar. The Jam Hispano de Game Audio uh, is a game audio jam coming up February 7th. Uh, it's a two-week jam um, being coordinated by, um, by Juan in Colombia working at Ashasha Games, and they're building a community around this idea of uh, you know unity wise integration and um, yeah just seeing what kind of cool things they can come up with uh, this is a spanish language jam so uh, so participation is uh, you know somewhat language centric um, we are in a, a global community, uh, and so uh, I look forward to being a part of that as a mentor. Um, not a S Spanish speaker myself, but it uh, would be great to participate in that to the best of my ability and, and see what kind of cool uh, audio-related stuff folks come up with. Um, it's a great, it's a great uh, focus for interactive jam like that. Another cool thing to put on your calendar is our very own Mads Marietti uh, will be doing a game audio playthrough in Copenhagen in May. Um, Mads is over in in the area and will be dropping by. And the the game audio playthrough is something that uh, that I'm starting to see on the regular for that group over there. A uh, little bit of information here about that. Uh, an event aimed for audio geeks. I think that would be us. Mads is going to be playing through the Wise Adventure game and giving them some tips and behind-the-scenes information about it. Uh, so that should be should be great uh, great experience for folks in the area. Um, maybe you're doing something like this in your community. Uh, let me know about it. I'm very interested to know if. Um, yeah, what people are doing and how they're cultivating communities in their area. Uh, here on Wise Up On Air, we're trying to bring the wise community together and uh, share in the, our experiences so that we can all do these cool things uh, with interactive sound together. So uh, great to see these community events coming through. Uh, another thing I want to do is I want to throw back to some blogs uh, from Trolls Nygaard. Uh, a couple of great blogs that I came across recently uh, on the Audio Kinetic blog. Tools for Experiments in UE4, so spline-based audio emitters, volumetric audio emitter, some 
an overview of why you would use something like that. Uh, he also did a great blog on the making, uh, making sounds for a ghost. This was um, back in 2017 and 2018. But uh, again, just a wealth of information on that audio kinetic blog, go digging for it. Um, you know, fantastic contributions here from trolls, trolls, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, thanks for putting these together. And if anyone out there is interested, uh, we're always looking for contributions to the Audio Kinetic blog. Uh, we have a page uh, on the website that gives some guidelines for writing a blog and some suggestions for, for how to do that. So I think uh, if anyone out there has some information to share about how they're using audio creatively and, and dynamically, uh, we're here for you. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, just this month, there have been a couple of videos come across my desk that I thought were really interesting and worth sharing. Uh, the first one here is from Yuso Tolonen, and he's got a, a wise Unreal tech demo that I think is pretty cool. I'm going to spin a little bit of that. Again, using RTPCs to modify, you know, distance or change sounds based on velocity of the objects. Uh, some really cool sound design, and again, just like a testament of of what you can do with uh, Wise and and Unreal. Just uh, yeah, as you're finding your way through, uh, you know, understanding interactive sound. Some really cool stuff. Uh, the next one I want to show off is actually from Becky Street. She has a, a very thorough demo on a WISE Unity integration and implementing footsteps. Hello, Becky here, and today we're going to be looking at how I implemented footsteps with WISE into the demo level of Viking Village in Unity. Okay, so first I integrated the WISE project with the Unity project. And again, so very meticulous there. overview. Uh, if it's the kind of thing that you're just getting started with or endeavoring to take on uh, in your in your project, uh, it's great to have these resources for people to jump in, get an understanding of what they're up against, and maybe even get there faster thanks to someone else's um, walkthrough. In this case, Becky, thanks so much for putting up there. It's really cool to see. Uh, the last thing is from Alessandro Fama. We've got a whole bunch of wise unity tutorials again these are community-based um, things these are people putting these up uh, for the betterment of everyone out there in the community using wise and it's just always great when i stumble across stuff like that i'm just so happy to see it and i want to say thanks so much to everyone for that great so transitioning over let's uh let's talk Let's talk Ruben Rincon. Hola. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Thanks again so much hey. for being here today. And, uh, and, and I really want to start this conversation out with you and talk a little bit about your introduction into game audio. This was how many years ago now? Around seven, eight years. Probably, yes, more or less seven, eight years. Yeah, and what was that like? What was the path that you took in? Um... It was not the best path, that for sure. Because I started studying in the university in physics, and after a few years, I just gave up. Uh, I knew that that was not made for me. <laughs> so I, I was knew that video games were a passion, and music, and so on as well. So I decided to to to, to, to leave the university and I started some studio I started studying um, a kind of uh, audio engineering in Spain in yeah two years um, there I learned a lot about audio post-production sound design uh, music recording etc et and in the meantime that I was studying that uh, I was working with other people that were starting in the industry as well, like creating their first video games and so on, so I could learn as much as possible. Um, yeah, that's it. And I started mostly in, in the video games, 
uh, yeah. doing uh, some some design and composing music. And after four or five years, I was close to game up again with game audio with video games because the industry in Spain is not the the best one. Let's say there are yeah. not a lot of opportunities for sound designers here. So I was just giving up, and then I got an opportunity to work at Ubisoft. And you were working out of Barcelona at the time? Yes, I was working in Madrid. Sure. And then I got an opportunity in Ubisoft in Barcelona to yeah. work on my music seats, uh, just as sound designer and not a music composer and so on. So I said, okay, let's go for it. Um, yeah, that's it. Now I left Ubisoft a month ago. This month I'm starting a new adventure in my career. Yeah. This Monday, I cannot say anything else. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, things are pretty, pretty good. And in the meantime, yeah. while I was working at Ubisoft in Barcelona, I was working as well for Greece with the guys from Nomad Studio. They are from Barcelona as well. Right. So we'll come back to that, but I'm kind of interested what kind of um, what kind of resources were available to you as you were at university studying audio, yeah. you know, for game implementation for game audio like what was how were you introduced to that or what was the yeah where did where did you get that kind of training from i basically i have to to learn in, just by myself uh, the, the first years because we were all like starting in the industry creating our first project so in the university and um, in these studies that uh, sound studies that we did uh, we didn't uh, see anything regarding game audio, video games and audio. It was most focused on cinema, radio, uh, music, etc. Yeah. But not in video games. But uh, I, 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 I was like completely sure that I wanted to work on video games. So I learned a bit uh, about uh, middleware uh, engines like Unity, Unreal, etc. Um, yeah, at the very beginning, it was mostly uh, sort of trying and stuff, trying and learning from my mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was until four years ago, more or less, when I started working at Ubisoft. And, was, and then I started using WISE like properly. You know, sure. Professional scenario with resources, documentation, senior sound designers, audio directors, uh, who I learned. Uh, from a lot, I learned from them a lot, um, and yeah, and that's it. There, there are not a lot of um, uh, universities or schools in Spain focused on game audio. Actually, like you notice, know there, there are a bit more. There are more professionals, uh, even courses and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But five years ago, that was really, really hard. Yeah, if you could give a piece of advice to your younger self there as you were finding your way into your first position on Rainbow Six, you know, what would you tell yourself there about about the process that you were in, about what you were doing? What would have helped you at that time? What, when, you mean when I start working on Rainbow Six? Maybe before yeah. that, as you were kind of before finding that. your way in. <laughs> that was really hard. As I told you, I was up to to, to give up. I was like, okay, fuck this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I already spent a lot of time uh, trying my best, uh, looking for opportunities. Uh, there are a lot of competence uh, out there. Yeah. And, you know, globalization. Uh, there are people around the globe uh, doing a lot of good stuff. So that it's not easy being a freelance. Yeah. And I was almost giving up. But then I found this opportunity in Spain, and I was very, very, very lucky. Yeah. Because as as I said, the game industry in Spain, they are they don't used to work with in-house audio people. Yeah. You know what I mean? They prefer to work with freelance. And sure. So, bad part about it is that if someone wants to join the the game audio community, being a professional on this. Uh, they are not going to have a lot of people to learn from, which is not going to be easy for them. I mean, hope, yeah. I mean uh, luckily for us, we are trying to build a community in Spain. So we have a Great. Facebook group. We are trying to, to do a few meetups and so on. So we're trying to share 
knowledge, uh, technology, etc., experiences. But it's not easy in Spain. It's not easy. Sure. But I guess I would, if I had a time machine, I would go back and tell you not to give up because it sounds like, it sounds like that was kind of the, you know, the big thing is that your perseverance through that process, you know, led yes, to, yes. led to where you are today. And I, I'm grateful for that. I'm glad uh, you did that. Did Thanks you have a specialty at, uh, uh, at Ubisoft when you were working on Rainbow Six, a focus uh, area that you contributed to? We were a team of three audio designers at Ubisoft Barcelona, and we tried to move from to different the staff each two or three months uh, just to avoid being tired of doing exactly the same things every day. So yeah. sometimes I work on gadgets, other time I work on ambiences, other time I work on more, on more technical stuff like destruction and so on. Yeah. Cool. So it was so more it was a very rounded uh, education yeah. and and like you said the mentorship of um, of oh, the rest of your teammates. Problem. I, I learned a lot there, a lot. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a valuable perspective. We we take something and leave something from every every project. For sure, it, it takes a piece of us as well <laughs> with it. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, but we uh, we also leave it with uh, these experiences and and these um, yeah a legacy of games uh, in our past, right? Uh, and so from Ubisoft was, uh, is, did that lead you to Greece at, at this point? Was that uh, the next? Yes, the thing is that I started working on Greece on the on the demo be, just before joining Ubisoft. So I worked on Greece in parallel, like in my spare time, during weekends, afternoons, etc., for two years and a half. More or less. Okay. Which, which was very crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, I, I'm really happy with the game, uh, well, with what we achieved. Yeah. 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 Great. And the the company's name was Nomada Studio. Nomada. Okay. And you met those folks locally, or um, online? On Twitter, right? on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> yes, I was. Something that I used to do is going to Twitter and search for video games like uh, it's screenshot saturday or in yeah. game etc and as soon as i saw something cool my dm hey guys do you have a song guy nice <laughs> nice uh that was how i was introduced to greece as well it was you know years ago in in development you know this is a game that speaks through screenshots in a very clear and artistic kind of way and so starting to see some of those early prototypes the early demos this is uh i've had my eyes on it for a long time and it was great to finally get ears on uh the work that you were contributing to it so it's been great to watch that develop uh cool and so you're working this all remotely simultaneous to your day job at ubisoft uh That's happy. And, and did you, I mean, <laughs> take a, yeah. take a breath on that one. Yeah. And, uh, and so, um, wow. The, let's talk before we get into some examples, cause I think that's where the real fun is. Um, let's talk about that remote life freelance kind of situation. Uh, how integrated were you with the development team from a source control perspective, from a tools perspective? Um, what yeah. was that relationship like? The thing is that I think that the key of this project is that they are from Barcelona as well. I was in Barcelona at that time, and they have the studio in the same neighborhood than me. Uh, Great. I, I was living very, very close to them. So... We have meetings like quite a lot every week. We talk a lot by email, WhatsApp, uh, taking a coffee or whatever. Yeah. Um, and from the very, very beginning, I think that the other key of the project is that we try to keep it simple. I 
to mm -hmm. university and simple we didn't want anything crazy or super fancy no no simple working and beautiful <laughs> yeah yeah uh and at at times very understated uh and we'll kind of cover some of that there uh it was a a wise production uh did you know from the beginning that that you would uh that you would have the engine and tool set at your disposal? Was it a negotiation? How did that process okay. evolve for you? Working with the guys from Romada was super easy because um, two of the three founders of the studio, they were working at Ubisoft as well. They are, pro they are programmers and they worked at Ubisoft and other companies like IO Interactive and so on for a lot of years. So they are super professional. And they were like, okay, look, uh, we are not sound designers. We don't know anything about the audio. We trust on you. If you tell us, okay, we need to do this and this and that, we don't want to do it. So for for the demo, for the very, very beginning, we started using FMOD. I'm sorry. <laughs> and That's great. We did the demo. And once that we got the budget, the okay from the Polver Digital to, to the P2 production and so on, I said, okay, I think we should move into what? <laughs> Uh, sure. but why because if mod is free for us and uh, maybe we have to pay a bit for for wise for the license and so on i said okay because i think that it's gonna be better for everybody it's more stable with unity i know it way more better than F mod i like a lot more the the way that you can control the performance uh, etc and they took a look to it and they were like okay let's go for it uh, if you want to use wise let's use wise great great very very easy which i really appreciate because some sometimes we are like okay guys we need to use some professional tools for audio production no 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 at the end you have to develop a lot of tools that wipe are really fast so, yeah and you were working in parallel across two different projects using uh using the same tools that must have been a benefit to you as well. Exactly, exactly, because I was learning a lot at Ubisoft that I could use in, in Greece. And at, at the same time, I have a lot of freedom to do crazy stuff on wise, to test things, to make mistakes, etc. in Greece that I could use at Ubisoft as well. Perfect, perfect, it was what like a great. A master, like a master class of wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whew. Uh, a lot that's a working, lot of yes yeah working during the morning during the afternoon and during the night with wise <laughs> yeah it's making me tired just talking about it and uh uh so uh again great source control integration you had the the game um locally that you could sync yes. and play and so you were right there um working in the project yes. right next to the programmers. Exactly. I have the Unity project. I have WISE, of course. We were using a GitHub for yeah. the, the, the repository. Yeah. And if at some point I, I did something more powerful or whatever, I could just pass by the studio. That's it. Great. Yeah, but I have everything at home. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Excellent. Well, I think that's a perfect segue to start talking a little bit about um, the game. And I'm going to switch over to... This example here. And this is a section early on in the game where you're uh traveling across the landscape and the music is integrated with as you can hear it uh integrating with the wind which creates an obstacle and you know it's a a very simple relationship um but very effective and 
it just felt so great. Um, I'm wondering if if you have any anything uh, to contribute to how that happened. Uh, what was the process there? Well, the thing is that from game design point, uh, the timing between the the calm and the and the wind, the storm was already defined. I think that it was like five six seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, so something that we did from the very beginning was working super close with the composers, Berlinist, which they are really really nice guys, and they were very into the project as well. The decisions they wanted to to make sure that they knew everything from the project, not only from the artistic side but from from the technical side as well. So we synced a lot and we think uh, like, uh, okay, you're gonna what we need from you is a stem of music like the calm part with the piano, and then this other one with the organ uh, for the, for the uh, with the storm. Yeah, um, that's it. That's it. They are just uh, like two loops. From music for the music point, sure. Uh, but the timing was already defined previously by the game design, so was every everything was super easy for for us. Um, from game from sound design, uh, do you want me to to share the the project? Or do you want to do you want to switch over to it? If you want, yeah, I don't mind. Okay, great. Okay, let's, let's try it. One sec. And... Okay, do you see the project? Almost. It's a little bit of dancing. <laughs> and we're live with the project. Okay, cool. So uh, here, I mean, it says, well, first of all, uh, I try to make sure that the nomenclature of the project is the clearest as possible. I mean, it's like the key. To find everything, I mean, it says they are yeah, divided by levels. Naming it's, standards, right? Yes, exactly. It's super important. Common, desert forest, etc. In this part is desert. Here, exterior, wind, the car, general, random dust, just for the small details, and desert, the sandstorm loop. Okay. And it has a, a start, which we check the the even here. It has a fade time with the perfect and so on. And here we have a set volume voice for the general wind on the background, two minutes. And that's Great, it. that's a perfect e explanation of of that wind system again coming up and is that also yeah. handling the music playback or is that in a separate event they are in a separate event gotcha music, uh, sir, Maurice here yes we have the this one there is the this is the car here we have an the organ. And this part uh, fits with the final. As you can see, they, they have their own uh, event here. Sure. Play M from music, the third wing, infinite final, loop, etc. The thing about the music, Chris, is that we try to use the the the, tri the triggers from the trigger boxes from Unity, but we were not very happy with them. So music is being called by code. So we have sure. more control about everything. Right, because so they're already control. handling the 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 physics of uh, pushing the character and and all of the all of that interaction yeah. in code as well. So exactly, uh, the, uh, Roger Mendoza, the, the programmer, uh, one of the co-founders of the studio. Uh, was in charge of the music implementation because it has it, it was made by code so I, yeah. I I don't know anything about coding. <laughs> uh, again, I think that uh, 
the, to be able to hand off event names to a programmer and say these uh, are tied to these actions, you know, yes. they're very intimate with and understand their code. Um, yeah. And that handoff um, um, of the event makes that easy for them, I think. And something that I really appreciate from Roger is that yeah, from the very beginning, he told me, okay, man, I'm going to help you with everything regarding audio. And he put a lot of effort learning uh, audio concepts from audio, like what uh, is a compressor, EQ, how WISE works, the integration with Unity. He, he took a look into the code, etc. And he was very into sound design as well, which I really appreciate because he, he made my work so much easier. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, a good programmer yes. can do that for sure. Yes, it makes the difference, huh? Yeah. And as you can see, the music system, I mean, the structure is not crazy. Sure. Uh, again, it's a pleasure to be able to peek into your WISE project. It, you know, prior to starting work at Audio Kinetic, it was, it was always one of my greatest joys to see other people's projects, to see how they're brains kind of align within the hierarchy and within uh, their integration. And so uh, appreciate yeah, you sharing that, that is, with us. This could, maybe this could be useful for, for somebody, which I would be really happy. Yeah, so, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. Again, it's always a pleasure to kind of look behind the pixels on the screen and see this, uh, see this kind of snapshot of how it actually gets done. So thanks for sharing that. No problem. And then if you want to take a look at the, the song bands, music, but we mostly divided them by levels. We were calling like uh, song bands by level, cave, desert, and game, etc. So you know, I double click here, I have the events um, with the, the music, the sound effects, everything. Yeah. For some, it's for some spe very specific uh, stuff, we have some some banks like this boss bar, which is one of the of the bosses of the game. Yeah, mostly for performance. So you can um, load and unload he, it only when exactly. the bird is around. Yeah, exactly. And here we have a playgo sound bank, which is which is called during all the game, the whole game, with the most important important things like footsteps, well, mostly folly. Um, some methods, uh, fireflies, etc. Destruction. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Again, it's a it's a gift to be able to see into the process. Uh, thanks so much for bringing that. It uh, the the thing I wanted no to circle back to, and and you said this word, and and I'm just a, a straight sucker for it is footsteps, uh, <laughs> because. Uh, I, I did a thing called the footstep sound study. This was probably 10 or 12 years ago now. And this just looked specifically at footsteps in games and, and how they're used and the different ways that they're used and their evolution over time. And this is one thing that really strikes me about a game like Greece is that, well, first of all, there's so much dynamic range. Like we've yes. <laughs> talked a little bit about that and it's worth kind of digging into it as well. But this is a game that yes. really, um, that really creates space and that environment, that feeling is in my mind, so much attributed to the balance of elements. And, you know, for me on the lowest, um, amplitude of that spectrum are the footsteps really just barely holding it down but giving you that um rooting you in the world but not whacking you over the head with uh with it they're just they're mixed really well in the context of this extremely dynamic game so yeah. what was that process like trying to find the footsteps or find that that mix balance over the course of production well something that we wanted to do from from the very beginning is having a lot of variations to, to avoid people being tired of the same sounds so we have the footsteps divided by action 
break, jump, land, run, slide, walk, etc. Water is my splash. This will be here. This will be here. This will be more. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, footstep, for instance, run. Boom. Concrete, constellation, crystal, glass, ice, leaves, magic, metal, rock, sand, water, wood. Just a random container with a pitch variation, a uh, low pass filter variation. Yeah. Five, five sounds more. Or less. Sure. Per so surface or per type case, per surface. Yeah. Yes. There are just three because you don't work uh, water a lot, but in, in sand, as you know, as you can see, there are nine. We wanted to have a lot of variations just for that to avoid people being tired of them. And something funny is that footsteps are not 3D. Uh, in fact, I think that all the foley are 2D because we had some problems with the camera. There are a lot of camera movements in the game and sometimes we just lost the footsteps and other times they are right in your face and we didn't like that. So we put them in in 2D with our RTPC uh, from the character to the camera. So if the camera was, I don't know, a bit far, maybe the problem was here. It's like a fake uh, 3D positioning. Yeah. So when the camera was clo close to the character, the level was this one. And then when we have like a fade out of the camera, I don't know how to say it, uh, when the yeah. camera was a bit far. Yep. You want to, to, to listen to them lower. We were controlling it with this RTPC. Yeah, and to me, this is the perfect like hybrid 2D, 3D system, exactly. right? It's exactly. camera based um, as far as giving you that distance uh, feel, right? Yes. Um, but again, you're screen locked, and so uh, and so you still want to have you know that kind of 2D presence where everything is mm -hmm. consistent. Um, with that small amount of automation that you've drawn in there, it just makes, that's that's great. What a great effect. Thanks, man. And also with this RTPC, we have like more control about, okay, the, do we want the footsteps to have the same volume that the glow when the camera is, uh, I don't know, at this point? No, so as we have the RTPC, we have custom RTPCs for the, for, for the footsteps. Yeah. For the clothes and for a special for a special moments, I think that no, they are three D probably. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but... there are just uh, a special uh, foley. Let's say it's when when you double jump or when you do this uh, box uh, thing when you are so heavy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So for, for this one, for instance, uh, we have, uh, okay, these are footsteps. Yes, these are footsteps. Uh, it's not close, this footstep, sorry. <laughs> yeah. They have, they, they are, there are different variations for different uh, uh, surfaces, constellations, concrete, etc. It's always the same. We try to have variations. Um, we try to keep it dynamic based on the different surfaces that the gate has. Um, maybe this one is the, the most beautiful one uh, around the constellation. This one. Very beautiful. Yeah, and that's when the uh, when the constellation connects with uh, exactly. with stars that you've uh, collected. Exactly. When I'm gonna switch over and run some uh, some gameplay right now. Let me run some gameplay uh, of footsteps and take a look at that. Early on in the game, just one of the transition moments.
And again, just the subtlety of of the Foleyan footsteps. For for these kind of moments, they are cinematics. We were using well, in fact, for the world game, we, we use a lot of states. Yeah. For for me, it was the key. Um, from the very beginning, from the beginning of the development, uh, Conrad Rosset, the project director from the project, uh, he was completely sure that art and music were the protagonist of the of the game. Yeah. So sound effects are there, uh, like uh, they are there, but they are not the, the in the main focus. Right. So for for the cinematic. Okay. So I'm going to stop it there for a second because, uh, you know listening to that movement sound through there, you know, we started out in sand, uh, we had the stone steps up to the top, and when we were at the top then, reverb, and mm. just all seamlessly, very appropriate, very just understated and well played. Uh, trigger volumes for reverb, or how are you managing that? Exactly, uh, yeah. trigger volumes. Yeah, that's Perfect. It. Uh, if you want to share the project, I don't know yep. if you can put it. Let's go back to I it. And show you the the, the course. Do you see? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, cool. So here, as I told you before, we try to keep it simple. Master of the booze, I mean, is auxiliar with effects for yep. a uh, interface. You see it's on effects. Auxiliar, Robert. Big, cave, exterior, medium, and small. That's sure. It. And that's it with the white room wherever. Yeah, simple and well executed. Again, I think that's kind of the beauty exactly. of it. Uh, yes, let's... The thing is that we already have everything on white, so I I I did a lot a bit of researching about convulsion river and so on, but it was too much for this point. Yeah, I mean, it was not necessary. We yep. already have reverbs here, and I think that that one is this one, the absolute exterior. So we have different volumes, trigger volumes in the Unity project. So each time that the character is passing, is passing, is going through, sorry, uh, these volumes, boom, this reverb is triggered. Yep, yep. Uh, that's it. Again, um, simple, yeah. simple execution. Um, but really well thought out and detailed. Um, just just well done. Thanks, man. Uh, I'm going to spin so. another section of the game. This is a little bit later in the game, and it illustrates, I think, uh, a couple different kinds of Foley sounds. This is, uh, again, I, I love this section of the game for the organic quality of the sounds. Those slides get me. Like, <laughs> just got. Uh, just enough dynamism, enough movement. Uh, really cool. And again, transition to concrete, and it, it just all, all of those, you know small details things like surf surface materials uh there's those little things add up man it uh it really does paint a beautiful picture with sound of this environment and conveys that really well uh, yeah uh so, so do you want me to go through it yeah sure <laughs> let's do it so something that you say that i think that you are right is that we put a lot of uh, effort in this, on the small details. For instance, that transition between the very top of, of the level while you are going down and then you are in this bridge. Uh, I think that the ambience is probably here. Bridge. No, it's forest here, exterior. It's probably one of these ones. 
Great. We tried a lot iterating with the phase time and different fading curves. So we could achieve the, the, the I don't know how to say it, like the best transition. At yeah. least, not, not the best, but at least the transition that we wanted. <laughs> we wanted it to, we wanted these kind of things to be calm, minimalistic, so. So yeah, we played a lot with the fade times and the curves. Yep. I don't, I don't really know which, which song was that one. Probably this one. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and and in a section like that, that, you're you're transitioning downward, so you've got yeah. it, there's no going back, right? Exactly. So so you have this kind of you can handcraft those transitions and know okay. that they're going to execute um, in that way as intended. Exactly. There are two trigger volumes. Uh, and for instance, if you check here, the play, it has a, a small phase time. So it comes in like in a very soft way. And then you have the stop with another phase time. So at the end, we have kind of a blending. Yeah, yeah. We try to use the blend track containers, but I mean, we didn't need them at the end. With events, it was more than enough. And for the slide, we have a slide for different uh, surfaces, like concrete, constellation, concrete. This one, yeah. the one that we listen to, was probably this one. Yeah. Yeah. So are, is that just a single loop that you're uh, looping? Yeah. You have little pieces that you're juggling around, or? No, it's just a loop. It's just a loop. Cool, cool. I think I, I it's something that I that we talk a, a, about during the development, having like random containers with different details of the surface, like branches or, or whatever. But at the end, this loop was working nice. So yeah, yeah, it's great. And the other thing is the what I told you before the states. We have uh, some states. I'm going to look at no, here for the storm. For what you see under water, under water. Um, yeah, we use a lot of states. So it's time that you go into a cinematic and you go out from a cinematic. That you have this transition time, etc. And that's your. Those are your opportunities to make sure that the sound and music are in balance for those exactly. epic moments. Um, exactly. Again, a lot of a lot of artistry in those transitions, right? Exactly. For instance, here we are using for for the exterior ambiences in the forest. Uh, one, two, three, four different stages. Yeah. Inside, inside soap, the forest water, and underwater. Speaking of underwater, I'm going to flip back to some gameplay. There's a section I wanted to highlight. Uh, this cool. is a little later in the game. And let me just refresh that real quick. So a couple of cool things about that section for me, like the waterfall, first of all, starting out, you know, there's a couple of them punctuated uh, throughout this section of the game. And they just, again, understated, well-placed, and they, they fill and define that space in such a nice, uh, just gives it such a nice feeling. Uh, and then how cool is that? You go underwater, you get the filtering effect, uh, you come out, it uh, it blossoms back into full frequency. Um, again, I'm I'm imagining uh, you could show us through some of some of the places where you maybe handle that effect. Yes. Great. Yes, for sure. So, for instance, for underwater, well, 
we're using states and RTPCs at the same time. We're using uh, states for, for our things like amnesties. Here in K, we have the 3D and interior, the state here for underwater. We are applying a poison low pass filter yep. system. Once yep. that you are on and once that you are off, it's over with this transition time, which is like very fast. That's yep. very fast. There, then we have well, we divided the sun letters for global and by levels. In levels cave, for instance, there are um, tech. <laughs> no, it's not here, but it's here. No. Okay, sorry, it's here. Cave 3D. Yeah. The waterfalls. Well, they are being affected by the by the state as well, not R RTPC, but. There are other sound effects like, oh yeah, I know which ones. Uh, the swim folly, okay? When yeah. you are swimming, yep. there's this RTPC controlling the the boy low pass the boy's low pass filter based on the distance to the camera. Sure. They are not being affected by the by the state. Right. That's fantastic. And then when you come out of the pool there did I hear some water footsteps for a while? Probably, yes. And how yes, do you determine, is, the... is that just the surface material that you tag kind of coming out of the water or are you doing some kind of cool down timer on that? No, I think that is the mix of the sound, the exit from water. Okay. And probably at the level is, let's say run, I water. Yeah. Yes. Right. This one. Yeah. And is yeah. that uh, is that tagged on the the surface coming out of exactly. there? Ah, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is a very uh, effective way to implement water footsteps. You tag, you know, the first few steps out of the water with that water surface and uh, and let it handle it. Uh, I can imagine other scenarios where you know, you pass a RTPC for that. Um, you That's say it. it's wet, and then you put a little um, game parameter interpolation, and over you know three seconds, it goes from wet to dry. And you know, just there's there's yeah. so many different ways to uh, to kind of create these effects uh, using states, using RTPCs. Uh, it's great to see. It's great to see mm. your implementation it's on it. It's kind of crazy. I don't know if it's the best, but it worked for us. <laughs> yeah. As I told you, for, for ambiences, we use the states. And for the foley, for the swimming and so on, we use the RTPCs. We have a global RTPC uh, based on the distance to the camera. And then we have a dedicated RTPC for the low pass filter once that you are underwater. Yeah, and, yeah. And as you can see, it's different for each one of of the actions, exit the the RTPC that controls the low pass filter is different with exit sound. Yeah, it's different with enter. I'm going to keep coming it's back to this word again, Ruben. Just so handcrafted and meticulously, um, you know, detailed, and just it's a, a pleasure to see all these places where you're making creative choices. Uh, you have the tools at your fingertips to do that. Um, it's really mm -hmm. cool to see. Hey, in the chat room, good to see everyone. I hope you're following along there, uh, folks tuned in. Uh, if you have questions, now would be a good time to start um, putting them in there. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's put Ruben through the paces. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to switch back to just one more section of gameplay that I thought was pretty good. And I guess spoiler warnings if folks haven't <laughs> played this far into the game. It's a, uh, it's a very digestible game. It's a very, um, yeah, straightforward uh, playthrough, but really delightful and joyous. I really appreciated uh the holiday season sitting down and uh, and spending some time with it. So I'm going to spin one more section here. 
that I thought was quite enjoyable. So again, just a lot of uh, a lot of subtle detail, the systemic uh, filtering uh, of the underwater effect as it transitions into this new kind of gameplay type uh, is just it's great. That system's working for you, right? We saw it in one scenario where it's very natural, right? You're diving underwater, and in this, you know, the gameplay has evolved where it's become more fantastical as you jump between these. Uh, water trees and and the system holds up the system does what it does it sounds natural and appropriate and very artistic um, I just love that and then in the beginning of this clip like those birds uh, it's <laughs> this just... is something that we wanted from the very beginning to sound the game to sound uh, like organic natural with life so yeah here, I know if you are seeing the project yep we have a uh, divided by animals. Uh, sky animals here. We have yeah. quite a lot of animals here. Beetle. One. And that is, I think, that was was on the power. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. and sound in the game, very punctuating, right? It's like, because there's so much space, so much tranquility, like when you do yeah. get the, the sound of the birds, uh, the sound of the constellations, like they're just these um, beautifully crafted sonic punctuation marks throughout the experience. I think, yeah, I think that one of that the key for that is that we work pretty close with the composers. So from the very beginning, we have the, the music from that level. So it was like, okay, the move on this level is gonna be very hard, very soft, no risk, you are almost at the end. Everything is super colorful, and you learn how to sing as well. I think that you already would have um, this thing here for the same when you, have, when you don't have voice. Yeah. And then you have the star. We also have a, a state, we have a state in wise that when when the player is singing, uh, the ambiences and the rest and the rest of the sounds they go down. It's like the main focus is the voice because you finally have it and you want to do that moment. That's great. That's great. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. We, that's it. <laughs> I mean, again, a, a handcrafted experience. It sounds like uh, from all aspects, there was a uh, intention to create an experience that um, that was really working on all the levels, right? Um, the feel of the game, the visuals, the sound. It sounds like everyone was really aligned on on communicating this through the game. Yes, exactly. I think that that's because the the creative direction from scratch was super clear, and Conrad said, you know, you know how to 
what, what, what he wanted for the game, and Roger and Adrian, the other co-founders of the studio, they knew it as well, and they knew how to work with other people with the same audience, which I really appreciate a lot. In fact, uh, Roger, the programmer, he has his own <laughs> set uh, even here with a, with a song just for testing. So each time that he tried something new in the game, he just plug in this, this, this event just for testing. Perfect. Uh, yeah. It. Yeah. Uh, again, this, this idea of empowering people with the tools to do their job, right? Yes, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's Absolutely. something... And I think that... We, that's something great from West that everybody is able, even if they are not some designers, they can learn pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. And this idea of, you know, sound advocacy on a team and how you hope to empower the other disciplines, you know, with, for mm. instance, providing test test events or or even yeah. setting up uh, a library of sounds that they can uh, that they could use if they uh, need to take it that far well for, uh, well in this case I think that regarding the, the singing for instance uh, this one is the, is the voice from the singer of the of the soundtrack yeah it's everything is like a family game let's say <laughs> it's great it's great I really enjoyed it. Uh, is there anything else you want to show us in the Wise Project? I don't know. I already saw, uh, I already saw the ambiences, some of the pets fully, uh, events, uh, some banks, uh, estates. I don't know. I Great. Think I'm fine. It's quiet in the chat to... room. Uh, everyone is uh, everyone is content, and uh, we're giving Sophia chills. Uh, you know, from the singing, and uh, I, I feel like we've uh, we've done uh, our job here today. Uh, so that's that's beautiful. Uh, cool. Yeah, what a great thing! Thanks so much for spending your time today and walking through the project. Again, I'm taking away. You know, I took away from my playthrough of it just how uh, special the integration of audio was within the game. Um, you know seeing the wise project seeing some of the techniques um, these are all things accessible to to folks using the wise authoring application uh, it's just great to see such a you know hand articulated uh, integration and uh, again all the sound work is just so tasty and like lands in just the right spot at just the right time so uh, thanks so much thanks, for man. for going over this today with me. Uh, to you. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Cheers. Uh, so closing it out, Wise Up On Air. There it was. Uh, if you have ideas or suggestions for other topics that we could cover, um, definitely drop a line. Open ears at audiokinetic.com. Uh, place you can drop any suggestions or uh, any of your experiences um, got some exciting stuff coming up this year not gonna lie starting to line up the good things uh, in addition to wise up on air in February uh, we will have a special IGF nominated game that we'll be covering uh, we are doing some Wise Up hands-on, so subscribe to the Twitch channel. Get yourself on uh, whatever newsletters and mailing lists you can over at audiokinetic.com, and we'll keep you posted on some of these informative hands-on Wise Up on-air sessions and keep bringing you some cool stuff in the future. Thanks so much uh, again, Ruben, for joining me today on the live stream thank you it's Maybe. been fantastic thanks to you in the chat room and uh we'll see you on wise up on air next time cheers <laughs>